in this section, we will discuss what is motivation and what are the motivation theories that exist in our society. Motivation is actually a process which people are propelled to engage in a particular behavior. So say for instance, why you are motivated to attend the lecture or why, uh, why you are motivated to attend the panopto uh, lecture or like Zoom lecture. So there is like there should be something for which that it propelled you, motivate you to do something. It is a psychological process that causes the arousal, the direction, and the persistence of the voluntary actions. Quantum says shares is, uh, shares similar viewpoints on motivation, where motivation refers to the aspect which energizes, directs, and sustains behavior. Motivation is also a process of arousing and sustaining a goal-directed behavior. Since the term of the motivation is divided from the Latin word movie, which means to move. So to try to move somebody to do something, there's a kind of like motivation. But the word motivation implies to move, push or persuade towards satisfying a need, which is a, base, which is a basic psychological process. While it is known as a psychological process, you may find the motivation theory is both exist in both the textbook of management and also uh, the textbook of psychology. In fact, motivation is not just a psychological process, but it can be actually an important element in management where you try to manage somebody to do something. It also requires motivation. To ensure the success of a company, employers must understand what motivates their employees because such understanding is essential to improve their productivity. Motivation constitutes a central element in going through the process of human learning. If the organization does not process the ability to motivate its employee, the knowledge within the organization would not be optimized. Therefore, it should be the objective of every learning organization to look for the factors that would motivate its employees to acquire continuous learning. So why is that important? Because of the fact that, say for instance, in case of 2020, that there is um, uh, there there is a um, uh, coronavirus disease where most of the students cannot be cannot be able to attend uh, the university courses. No matter if the university teachers lecturers in Hong Kong or in China, we face the same problem. And that all the lecturers have to learn by themselves on how to use the software like Zoom and also Panopto. This also meaning this also implies that learning and continuous learning is very important because of the changes in the society. Likewise, in case of mobile phone, in the past that we have got a uh, uh, Nokia, which is like the most uh, famous mobile phone companies. But then you may find that now it is not as brilliant as that before in terms of sales or market share. The major reason is, while other mobile phone companies, they have already developed their own smartphone system. Nokia's smartphone system may not be comparable to the others or may not meet the needs of the market in such a way that because of the so-called learning failure, or you may just say that well, they have not tried to learn something for which that they can develop a new product, so that they lost the market share. So what we say is that we must be we must be able to motivate the employees to take the advantage of the inherent knowledge and to secure their existence in an organization. Now here we we will introduce some of the traditional motivation theories. You may find that different theories they have got different ideas towards what constitutes motivation. Sometimes. A lot of students think that in secondary school or in high school, most of the motivation, uh, most of the answers that they have got a standard answer. There's A, B, C, or D. However, in real life situation, we have got many different answers towards the same question. So do not just stick with one question and saying that there should be answer should be A or that should be B. We have to think of under what situation, under what scenario what kind of the applications should be applied. 
And this is what the beauty of the university have as compared to the uh, maybe like associate degree or maybe like high school, primary school, um, and also kindergarten, where they actually only have one answer or two answers or three answers. They have got, it seems to be that they have got standard answer. But this is not what we are looking for. Uh, uh, we, are, we are trying to tell our students in the university. We are trying to tell them that we have to uh, be open-minded, accept different kinds of the answers towards the same question. And one of the very good example is the motivation theories. In case of theory X, it just says on the, uh, uh, based on the rudimentary assumption that men are not self-motivated. So they suggest that the man has to be directed, forced, and threatened with penalty for achieving certain organizational objectives. Nevertheless, some researchers concede that minimum supervision is sufficient to ensure the organization members do what they should do. And subject to regulations, humans can exercise discretion, punishments, and fine are peripheral means to achieve goals set by the organizations only. Moreover, some of us opinion that the disciplinary actions tend to be ineffective because either of delay or mild in nature. Say for instance, now suppose that for today that you have done something wrong, and then say for instance you have tell a lie, uh, you have told a lie to your parents, and then your parents just say that well I will punish you by uh, by um, not giving you uh, the uh, the money of delay. For example, every day that your parents give you $100, that they would, what my parents said that they will try to, uh, uh, try to deduct the $100 from you, delay. Now, suppose that they do not do it today because of the delay. Then you will just say that, hey, doesn't matter. Probably tomorrow she has already forgotten. Okay, your mom has already forgotten. Tomorrow, your dad has already forgotten too, so therefore, ultimately, there is no punishment at all. So therefore, some of the disciplinary action may not be effective because of the uh, because of the fact that it is not of timely manner. It may be mild in nature. Okay, one hundred dollars is just a small amount to me. Why? If I will go out to work, I work as a tutor. Probably there's more than one hundred dollars. For an hour. So this $100, forget about it. So therefore, in terms of theory X, if that is to be, that has to be effective, we have to consider two major factors. Factor number one, that is, that must not be delayed. Number two is that, that cannot be too mild in nature, as otherwise nobody will think that it is, a, uh, it is actually a kind of punishment. Theory Y represents another polar hypothesis about human behavior. And followers of Theory Y trust men and have confidence that they are responsible. Provided a suitable working environment, workers can reach the goal set by the companies. Theory Y followers consider that human beings need to, uh, to work and treat like a precious member in society. The question is, should we follow Theory X or Theory Y then? Well, trust is actually a fundamental requirement for like communication, open and also a communal learning. So if you think that whatever thing that we try to talk to our neighbor, they will be disclosed to everybody, this kind of a trust is not exist. And then knowledge sharing, communication, communal learning may not exist because of this fact. So therefore, theory why has to be there to a certain extent. So what we have observed is Theory X and Y represents the two polar cases with the completely different scenarios, which neither of them represents the real situation well. You cannot just say that we will just use like theory X where we always punish the people. Looking back at history, for example, many years ago that we have got Shen Yang, for example. What he did was that he has got a lot of punishment. They tried to punish everybody if they have not done correctly according to the law. And then what was his final fate was, he was actually put to death because of his own set of punishment criteria and rules. That, of, of course, to a certain extent, it tells you the failure of that kind of like punishment. And then, however, 
if we just talk about like theory why, where we just trust the people, that is also uh, almost um, impossible in most of the circumstances. Because of the fact that we may try to do something that is like favored to us to a certain extent. So therefore, combination of both two will be the best scenarios for which there are some of the penalties and there are some kind of trust to the people in terms of management and in terms of motivation. Reinforcement theory is proposed by the psychologist B. F. Skinner, Skinner contends that human behaviors are directly related to the results of the S. So if you know that you will be punished, then you will not do it. If you know that you will earn extra money, then you will do it. So by applying the reinforcement, people's behavior will change. Monetary incentives such as cash allowance, increase in salary, and non-monetary incentives such as being the named achiever of the week can motivate or positively reinforce employees to do the good work. By offering the pleasant consequence, positive reinforcement can motivate the people to work. Usually, however, there are actually too few winners in any incentive programs. Say for instance, students may be motivated to study because of the scholarship. However, they may think that there is only one, two, three or students that they can get the scholarship. Now, if you rank 10, then you may just say that, hey, it doesn't matter because I cannot get it. So a lot of circumstances why we enforcement theory in terms of like motivating people fail because of the fact that there are too few winners. Distress and corruption among the members of the organization can lead to a much greater concern. Say, for instance, is that fair in terms of the uh, motivation, in terms of the awards, is that fair? There may be a kind of like distrust saying that, hey, the selection committee is not fair. So I don't really mind of getting of any sort of scholarship, for example. Or alternatively, there may be some kind of like corruption. Of course, it is unlikely to have corruption for the scholarship in the university. But there may be like corruption in the case of like outside world. Say, for instance, some of the, uh, uh, there may be like, um, if you have bought some of the supermarket uh, products by $100, and then you will be able to get a chance to win a 7 million houses. In that sense, there may be some kind of the corruption that may exist. Like some people will just give $100,000 to the others, and then in the attempt to get the 7 million of the housing in return. So that can be a corruption, and that can be a very, very serious problem. Another problem of the reinforcement theory is monetary incentives can be too costly and useful in the short term only. It is quite often that they do not encourage the long term improvement. So if it is like one off, like for example, supermarket case, there can be one off only. So you will not encourage long term purchase of the supermarket by using the lucky draw perspective. This can be a very short term. Sometimes employees will do in one way because they know that if they do it in another way, then they will have negative consequences. In this way, their behaviors are reinforced by avoidance learning. Negative reinforcement, however, can offset the positive, positive reinforcement. Say, for instance, in case of accounting firm, the big four, they have got very high negative reinforcement in the sense that they have to long, work for a very long time. So some stu some people may think that, well, why not? I just uh, I just uh, go to work to the other uh, in other firms, so that I can avoid the negative enforcement that is long working hour. Even if there is like positive reinforcement, that is a salary is very high. So it just implies that, well, it doesn't mean that if positive reinforcement exists then it will automatically be able to motivate the people. We have to see whether or not that negative reinforcement exists. Sometimes positive value of the co-workers is so right that which lead to the workers to accept the punishment instead. In order to achieve some company's objectives and implement new innovative policies, newly implemented policies are usually associated. So you have to look at the policies 
in itself. And then a lot of circumstances, these policies, uh, policies are related to the reinforcement theory sometimes. Like, for example, if you can uh, sell out like 10 tickets, then I can give you extra $200. So that can be a count of the employment policy as well. Another thing is a parity of this theory. A lot of circumstances, there are some people just say that if I have got a very high salary, it doesn't matter that even if the country is like very poor in terms of ruling, I only look at my own pocket money, or I only look at uh, money in my hand and not other thing else. But is that true? Now, according to Moore's law theory, what is said is like men are motivated by five class of the of these. Number one is physiological, that is a shelter, hunter, sex, first, and other bodily needs. Number two is actually the safety, that is a security, protection from emotion, and also physical harm. Third is social, that is belongings, acceptance, and affection, and friendship. So that's why that, well, traditional universities still, still exist, even though there are a lot of online universities, because uh, probably it's uh, the third criteria, that is social, that exists. For its esteem, internal esteem factors, for instance, self-respect, autonomy, achievement, external esteem, for example, recognition, status, attention. So we want to achieve something. We want to make our own decision that's autonomy. We do not want to be controlled by the others. So there's a level four. So therefore, you may just say that, well, some people just think that they only need to have what satisfy their uh, the hunger needs or, uh, or like safety needs. Well, this is just very basic from the hierarchy of needs. The fourth level is that we should be able to control ourselves. We should be able to put everything under our own control. Self-actualization, that's a drive to become what one is capable of becoming, includes growth, achieving one's potential and self-fulfillment. So for the hierarchy of needs theory, we have got, first of all, that we have got physiological. Physiological. Number two is safety. Number three, love, or previously we call it as social. Number four is esteem. And number five is self-actualization. What hierarchy of needs theory suggests is that, well, not until that you fulfill physiological, then you will ask for safety. So this is very sensible. Suppose that you are now in the uh, you you are so for, unfortunate that you have taken a a a a broke ship, and then you will get lost in a in a one man island. You are alone. Probably the first thing that you have to think of is well, how can I satisfy my hunger needs? How can I feed myself? So probably I will catch some of the animals on the island and then burn it and then hit it and then uh eat it. But then by the time you eat it, after you eat it. Then you find that, well, there may be some kind of lions, some animals besides that. So you may find that, well, I have to find a shelter to satisfy my needs, to hide myself into the shelter. By the time you have got a shelter, then you will find that, well, I'm very lonely. I have no other things to do. So it's just that love that you have to satisfy. You want to control everything. You want to, everything is like, you want to have everything that is under your control. That would be like self-esteem, or maybe like much more higher hierarchy of needs, like include self-actualization. So you can still 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 see that it is like step by step instead of like just within one and then stop there. No. So although the this theory has been heavily criticized, a lot of people criticize what why that it should be like safety and then uh. Uh, and the love one is just like uh, safety and then uh, uh, physiological needs and then love etc. So therefore a lot of people just say that it is not true in the sense that it is so straight on the assumption on the hierarchy of needs and it fails to explain how behavior can be affected within the hierarchy. So there are also weak empirical foundation. So how can you find some of the example to prove that it is true? However, it still proves its values in its present moment. Most of theory indicates that motivation for knowledge comes uh, of works actually comes from the three highest hierarchy levels. This theory implies that the knowledge owners do not have the motivation to share 
what they know by information technology because such actions will not lead them to earn more money or improve the relationship with their colleagues. Uh, C O L L E A Q U E S. Uh, G U E S, sorry. So their motivation, however, mainly comes from the want to attain the self actualization. In another example, it's about the Hasbro two value theory. The Hasbro's two value theory is based on the different groups of factors. There's motivation and hygiene. Hygiene factors motivate people firstly in an active way. So generally, they do not motivate people when they are pleasant, but absence of them will lead to dissatisfaction and decrease in motivation. In Hasbro's two factor theory, there was an experiment that was associated with it. The light is on and the light is off. They tried to see whether or not that it will affect people's motivation to work in the factory. They found that in presence of it, it actually does not motivate the people. You will not be motivated by the presence of light, right? By the time you do any sort of work. That's true. However, when we turn off the light, the people find it very difficult to work. So the absence of them will lead to dissatisfaction and decrease in motivation. And these factors include like salary, working conditions, status, interpersonal relations. On the other hand, pleasant of motivator leads to increase both motivation and satisfaction. It includes a challenge of work. A lot of people, however, are motivated by challenge of work. If the challenge of work is pleasant, then you think that, well, I complete and accomplish one challenge. I have done something great. Promotion opportunities. If I tell you that you work in a uh, you work in a company and then you find that you have done a great job. However, promotion is not there. Then you may find that well I have no longer I do not have any motivation to work anymore. Sense of achievement. So say for instance you have uh why some people will find that like selling insurance is very uh that there is a very high uh motivation because like if you have sell some of the insurance, then you have got a sense of achievement, job done recognition, sense of responsibility. You may find that, well, why a nurse and doctor still work in a, such a bad environment where there are viruses everywhere? Because they think that this is a kind of like sense of responsibility. Operational autonomy, whether or not that you can make your own decision on how to deal with the difficulties ahead, whether or not that you are all under control, that you have no other way to exercise your uh, decision-making power. So if, say for instance, all the things are actually decided by the boss and you have no way to say no, for example, then probably that you may lose working motivation because of the loss in the operational autonomy. Another theory is about incentive theory. Incentive theory focuses on how external stimulate food uh, 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 in different directions. So we have got three types of incentives. Number one is remunerative incentives, which refers to some form of reward, especially monetary ones, in exchange for acting in one particular way. Even though we always say that monetary one is not, definitely not the only criteria, like for example, promotion, like for example, sense of achievement, etc. But remunerative in incentives, definitely sure is that monetary incentives must be one of them. Moral incentives, which are said to be a choice that is regarded as the right thing to do. For example, a person acts based on a moral incentive to have self-esteem or even admiration for his or her community. So say for instance, why you want to help the others? Why you help the others? A lot of circumstances is related to the moral incentives. You think that it is morally correct and then you do it. You may think that, well, some people admire you, that you do something that is like very regret, and that is a kind of incentive as well. The cohesive incentives which are set to exist when a person can, uh, can expect the failure to act in a particular way will result in physical force being used against them uh, in the community, for example, inflicting a pain in punishment. Many years ago, in the Egypt, uh, in the Egypt where we can see a lot of pyramids, this pyramid was actually built by a lot of men where they have got their sweat and tears on uh, over over the very long time. Now, how they are motivated? You can see that in some of the history book, they are hit by the string. By the time they do not move, by the time they cannot carry the stone on the way. So that is a kind of what? Hitting by physical force. 
you may also consider like those horse racing, why the horse race a lot fast, uh, uh, race in a very fast speed, mainly because of the fact that the men or the women who ride on the horse try to try try to use some force to hit on it by a string. So therefore, there is a kind of cohesive incentives as well. In short, motivation is a function of whatever independent variables is stimulated by the person's favorite incentive theory, and the compliance behavior maybe uh, depends on the individual's expectation of benefits from compliance behavior. We also have got some kind of the reward management system. Social exchange theory shows that employees behave positive ways when the organizations invest to them. So say for instance, why some of the companies that they provide the opportunities to further study? Because to a certain extent that if the organization tries to invest in them, they may feel that they, that is also a kind of benefit as well. Organizational inducements are the factors for the motivation of employees and do employ socially motivated employees make a great effort to benefit the organization. Reward management system have a major impact on organizations' capacity to catch, retain, and motivate the high potential employees, and as a result, getting the high level of, of performance. The expectation theory of uh, Factor V room suggests that uh, they try to use this as a foundation. As a theory, it's, uh, it's generally accepted as the most comprehensive explanation of the employee motivation. What they say is that expectation relates to the individual's increased effort and performance to the deserved and wanted rewards. They think that they will, if, for example, you work harder than your company will have got a higher salary, then you will be motivated. Likewise, in university, like in the coursework, what I usually say is that, well, if you work much more, then I will give you a higher marks for your continuous assessment. That that is also related to what expectation theory as well, where the people say uh, that they will expect that if they have increased effort, then they will try to have they they will have got better marks in students from students' perspective, or like from employees' perspective that you have got a higher salary. Based on this theory, the individual is inclined to add in a certain manner with the expectation that such ads will be followed by the given outcome as well as attractiveness of the outcome to the individual. What if I tell you that? A lot of students consider that marks is not essential. Grades are not are, are, are not that important to them. If that's the case, then they will not do anything, right? So there is a kind of the expectation as well. So you have to look at like whether or not that kind of the outcomes is attractive enough. So if the outcome is like, well, must and grace, I don't consider that is like that's such important to me, then accordingly, this kind of motivation may not be exist, even if I say that if you work harder, then I'll give you a higher marks. Expectation theory also suggests that people usually join organization with certain values and also expectation. Like why they join are universally. Probably they agree that they management is good probably they agree that the organization have bring has have actually brought something good to them and which is like valuable now a strong premise of this theory is when expectations are met individuals are motivated and exert a high level to a uh, high level effort to achieve the organizational goal now most of the social social behavior can be understood in terms of interaction between underlying motives and features of environment and therefore we have got three basic motives that predicts one's approach to doing uh to doing the concrete task where affiliation motivation predicts one's desire to be with the other people where sometimes like you work with the others you want to build a team like insurance company how they can get hold of a lot of the young people is that they try to arrange a lot a lot, a lot of activities like saying karaoke uh bow cheap baby kill okay how they can retain the employee they try to use the aff affiliation motivation where they think that well we all want to get along well with the others so that they have got affiliation motivation 
There may be power motivation which predicts one's desire to influence the others. So that they have got a separate into a small team. So that they have got some people that they become the team leader. And then team leader will have got a motivation to like exert influence on the team members. And the team members sooner or later will become team team leader as well. So that this is actually a kind of a motivation for which it motivates the people to do something. The end arc, it is naturally to a condition that drive to performance emulates from oneself, that is, when individuals feel committed to a standard of excellence and pursue the achievement goals on their own initiatives. This does not, however, necessarily mean that self such goals per se should arouse the achievement motivation to a great higher extent than the goals imposed by the others. So NR is actually defined as the desire or tendency to do things as rapidly and or as well as possible, and to overcome the obstacles and to attain the high standards, to excel oneself, to rival and surpass the others. Accordingly, the achievement motive can be divided into an approach tendency that is called the hope to success and the avoidance tendency called fear of failure. The power motive can be divided into hopes of power and fear of power. So people with the strong motivation, uh, power motivation may express this motive in a variety of socially acceptable forms of controlling and influencing the others such as providing service and helping others. So power is like a lot of people that they think that it is very important. So that's why there are some of the position within the uh, within the country, for example, that they may not have um, they they may not have money, but the people still want to work for that. Like say for instance, uh, some people they they work as uh, some of the com communities uh, uh, communist parties uh, members, for example. That is a kind of like power. You may think that I ha I can have got some sort of the uh, influencing the others, okay, providing service and helping others, but that cannot be that may not be linked with the monetary uh, uh, monetary incentives in certain way. So uh, this one is just say that uh, about uh, uh, about the motivation. So uh, it just illustrates that say for instance in equity that they have got. Uh, Opal to have an influence on the disparity and the empowerment that is a negative uh, uh, negative uh, open to seven in terms of like this personalization and then uh, this personalization will have got a negative uh, open to six uh, influence on the customer satisfaction emotional arousal that they have got some influence on the customer uh, satisfaction empowerments that they have got like open to two uh, influence on the customer satisfaction. Now, this just show you some of the relationship between like motivation and the customer satisfaction. Now, this model it is like something that is similar to the the SEM, the structural equation modeling. But you can see the different factors that motivate the others in a different uh in different way. And then uh, it just show you that uh maybe a kind of like customer satisfaction is is actually um, is is motivate by different factors and not one factor alone can satisfy the full needs. And if you try to do research in other circumstances, in other cases, that may not be, that should not be, I would not say this may not be, but should not be the same as what you have seen here. The affiliation motive is actually aroused by the need of being liked and being affiliated with the others. It concerns, it concerns establishing, maintaining or restoring a positive, effective relationship with another person. So goal setting theory is grounded in the belief that conscious goals and, incentive and intentions drive the results. So based on the goal setting theory, Locke and Locke uh, Latham found that individual goals are likely to determine how well they perform the related task. Specifically, they uh, clearly defined a more challenging goals use higher performance than big and easy to do goals. So if the US, you will see that the goal is like very challenging, very difficult, but you can do it, then that will be a kind of like fulfill the goal setting theory. But if you find that some of the goals are so challenging that you cannot do it, there's no motivation at all. At all or, well, that may be like so vague that you don't know what is the goal. What actually goes is that you might have no incentive to do anything at all. 
Goal setting theory assumes that individuals must be committed to the goal and must get feedback and must have the ability to perform the task. So application of motivation theories in maybe in financial sector, for example, one of the major financial uh, one of the major economic pillar in Hong Kong. Based on the motivational and goal setting theory, financial literacy programs should be more effective when they are motivated by perceptions and concerns about their financial well-being later in, the, in, in later in life, for example. So why a lot of people that they want to study? Why a lot of people they want to uh, invest in the stock market, for example, that is related to their financial well-being, for example. In terms of banking, the banking sector worldwide faces fierce competition due to the expansion of financial commodities. So there are banks everywhere. You can see a lot of banks in Hong Kong. You can see a lot of banks in Bangkok or in China. There are a lot of them. So the question is, how can you survive in such a fierce competition? One of the most important factors that contributes to the success of this sector is actually human resources. Because of the new ideas that come from human resources, best colleague. Okay, it's very important, which is an asset to provide the quality banking services that are difficult to replicate by competitors. The status of the employee of the employment highlights the importance, and therefore keeping the employees motivated is import is necessary to achieve the desired results. Now, the question is: the brightest people will not stay in a company for their whole life. The brightest people may have got other chances to be, uh, uh, to be hired by other banks, for example. So you can see that the banks that will work in the like, Bank of China may move to the Standard Chartered Bank, or Standard Chartered Bank may move back to the Bank of China. So actually, what we have seen is that the best employees, they have got a lot of the other uh, attractions, a lot of the other job opportunities that they may go to. So therefore, how you can retain the employees, how you can motivate them to stay in your company, is a big question for a lot of the banks. Job security and bankers' motivation at work. Survivors of the organizational and downsizing are pr prime candidates for the insecurity. Having seen their colleagues made redundant through the consolidation policies and also practices. A lot of circumstances, what we have seen is that downsizing is happening. Why? Stock market do not need bankers now. In a lot of circumstances, okay, not all the bankers do not need, but then it is like there are a lot of jobs less, a lot of jobs that they, they do not need now. Why? You can actually buy, sell, buy and sell the stocks through the online trading. Likewise, previously we buy the insurance from the banks, but now we usually buy the all the insurance through the internet. So what is the use of the bankers then? There's actually a problem of downsizing then. There's a lot of the bankers that they have to be laid off. In addition, studies have shown that all the jobs are seen less secure after downsizing and there is decline in trust and also commitment. Because of the fact that we have got a lot of the jobs that they are less secure, so therefore there is a decline in trust and commitment. People do a lot of things in work to do what? Well, while you are working for one job, you are trying to open your eye for the other job. You are trying to like WhatsApp and WeChat and then see what kind of jobs or even finding a job while you are working. A lot of circumstances in the past that they try to the company try to use a contract in order to motivate the people. What they say is that well, if you do not work hard, you will have you will no longer have the next contract. But what the people now do is that in terms of employees, well, if the contract is not is uh is not a necessary thing that it happened. What we can do is that we try to uh collect a lot of the information, a lot of contests. The bankers try to collect a lot of contests and then by the time they leave the banks, they will still have a lot of contacts and then liaise with the old employ uh, uh with the old customers and then sell the products, the financial products to them. So that's why is that you can see that a lot of circumstances of banks have changed in positions. So they change the shops the employees only stay in the bank for like two years or so, and then they have to move to another uh, another bank store. It's because of this reason. But what you can see is that this kind of these trusts, this kind of the decline in trust, it has got uh, changes in the people's motivation at work as well. So job security, to some extent, is actually fairly important in terms of motivation because in the past, uh, actually, if they 
work for our, for an organization, they consider that they will work for their whole life. So they try to think of some of the policies that is good to the company. They can also tell something that is like negative to towards their um, uh, to the towards their boss. But now it's like uh, if there's like control and bar by contract, they are not that they may not feel that free to tell what's wrong with the bank with the bank. So to certain extent, the job security is they affects the people's motivation to do something. Job survivors often face the fear of the job loss or loss of value job features and may lack motivation to go through the changes. So the thing that well, job survivors, it means that well, today cut John, tomorrow cut Mary, to, uh, and the day after tomorrow is Joseph. So a lot of people they may have got a kind of fear the job loss and then they may they may think that well, uh, they they may not have got a great motivation at work because after all they have got motivation to find another better job while they are working. Work family conflict increase in emotional exhaustion and also decrease in job satisfaction. Intrinsic motivation was found to exert a significant negative impact on emotional exhaustion. So results demonstrate that high level of intrinsic motivation results in high level of job performance, job satisfaction, and effective commitment to the organization. So a lot of circumstances, therefore, why that they, uh, sometimes they, uh, the interview also asks, well, you have got a family, so how can you remove, like, how can you solve the work family conflict? Because it's like, well, probably that you have got a son who is like staying in the hospital, then you have to, you may be emotionally exhausted, and then you have no other incentive to work at the at the bank, for example. So therefore, it is something for which that it is a hot topic in the bank training as well. Emotional exhaustion exerts a significant negative effect on the job satisfaction. The higher level of the job performance leads to an increase in the job satisfaction. Motivation in insurance companies. Positive motivation is in flavor of the organization, and negative motivation is against the organization and its products are of the opinion that there can be only one type of the motivation in a given time that can be either positive or negative. Similar action is valid for, relation, for rational and emotional motivation where customer responses towards a product can be one of two, or this can be like positive or negative. So um, in terms of the insurance company, that they have got a lot of different ways to motivate their employees to work as well. Like for example, in terms of like payment as well. Payment it is one of them. What you have seen is that they have got a very low salary, monthly salary, not until they can sell some insurance out. So more insurance they can be sold, that they have got a higher salary. So that is a kind of motivation. There may be kind of motivation where uh, where there may be like uh, a kind of like emotional uh, motivation where uh, the employees that they are they are having like boat trip they are having like BBQ asset so they try to motivate them uh, the employees to work because if you find that it is like going to job is a kind of fun you have got a lot of friends besides you so that can be a kind of emotional motivation in the insurance business, motivation is a primary factor that pushes the customers to buy a policy from the uh, from the company. So, customer motivation is actually designed as a designed as a consumer's desire or readiness to process right information or purchase a product. So, how you how they can open the ear, open the eye to read your insurance policy? Probably they have got medical talk. Probably they have to go talk about a. Uh, the 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 whole life finance, probably they have got some other thing else. So we try to give you a talk instead of like sell you the policy first. So the most important thing is that you must have got a desire to possess the information first, and afterwards they will just try to persuade you to buy the product. Hey, there is a very good policy that you can earn a lot of money, so on and so forth. Customer motivation focuses primarily on the consumers. Their beliefs, attitudes, and actions towards the purchase of goods and services. And motivation uh, consists of four main types: the positive, negative, relational, uh, rational, or emotional motivation. 
credibility or reliability of the product as an important factor in creating consumer motivation and states that all depends on the efforts of the organization to stress upon all the relational, uh, rational or emotional factors. Motivation can either be rational or emotional. So sometimes uh, you, are, you, are, you, you, you buy the insurance, like for example, you have heard that the one who sells the insurance has not sold any of the policy within the whole month. But then he has to, uh, or she has to fit for a young kid, okay, one year old and two year old. And then you are motivated by the emotional story to purchase a policy, to purchase an insurance product. That can be rational sometimes. Like for example, you have heard that, well, actually the return is much more higher than the existing financial product that you have heard so far. So that can be rational as well. So here are some of the references, so you can just uh, go and check with it uh, for uh, the uh, motivation. And of course, uh, you can uh, you can go to like Google, Google okay, try to Google it, uh, Google Scholar, not just ordinary Google, it's a Google Scholar. Try to search by using the term motivation. You will find a lot of different theories, a lot of the papers that exist in the market. And then do not think that there is only one theory that fits the motivation of the employees because there are so many different types of motivation that may motivate the people to do something. We are not thinking, we are not saying that there is only one size, one size of a zoo can fit everybody, but then we have got many different sizes of a zoo that it has to be like designed to feel, uh, to fit everybody's needs. So you cannot just say that, hey, I can use some money to, like, for example, to, uh, to let the uh, the the classmate to do course uh, to to do something for me for example there may be some other thing else not just about money so you can it can be what a kind of respect that can motivate people to do something or a kind of a praise for example that can motivate people to do something as well so we have got a lot of different factors to motivate the people to do something so you can actually go through all the papers not limited to my own papers because after all, after you leave the university, uh, you have to find some some time to learn every day. You have to open your eyes to search for all the others uh, that you may have never thought of to get in touch with these, to learn something new. And this is the most important skills for which our university students should be equipped of, not just academic results, but then the, uh, the kind of like motivation to learn by yourself and then to grab some of the new knowledge is very important. So this is actually the end of the lecture.